Hi, I'm Matt, aka Dragonborn Legendary, aka Dova Keen, aka I like choices in real life and video games. But let's be serious for a moment. The ability to get a 2 on an exam in high school, and my teacher says, What are you gonna do about that? And I look into her eyes, and then I say nothing. Then I put my head on my desk and fall asleep. The ability to ask my teacher to go to the restroom and get a drink and not go to the restroom, with the ability to ask to go get a drink, but then go to the restroom and take a shit. The ability to solve a Rubik's Cube in my 9th grade class only to make my science teacher trigger, take it from me, throw it into the chalkboard at full fucking force as I watch it beautifully explode into a million pieces. And as everyone looks at me, waiting for me to blow up in anger, I just do nothing. While in a calming voice I say, oh well, it was only $3, I'll just go buy another one. The ability to get up and do some chores, but then stop and say, Never mind. Then go take a shit, get some food, and go back to sleep. You may be wondering how this is relevant to the point. Sometimes I wonder myself that very same question. Alright, let's make this easy. Games with dynamic choices that truly impact your course in the game include, but are not limited to, Mass Effect, Witcher, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Duis X, and have a good blend of action, good story choices, and mechanics. Here's some that may not have both sides of the coin, but still do the job. Any Tale by Telltale Games. I remember I played Walking Dead by Telltale without having watched any of the Walking Dead prior. This game has everything a gamer can dream about, making as many choices as they want with various results. This game may not have the best controls and game mechanics, but it very well does the craziest shit in terms of dynamic choices for a video game. You have to shoot. I love this game, because it's amazing. The Stanley Parable, Detroit Become Human. This is one of those games that was a mixed bag in reviews, but it does the same thing that Telltale does without graphics that look like they were made on MS Paint. Call of Duty is a perfect example of a game that has choices but barely impact the player's path. Yeah, you didn't expect me to change the topic so fast. Well, I did. Basically, emotion shootout games are like when your teacher asks you for your homework and you know it's coming, so you try to make it interesting and think of a funny one-liner like homework, more like no work, then your teacher gives you detention for bad jokes. You got creative, you forgot to do your homework, and you changed the outcome. You could copy your friend's homework and escape the situation entirely. You could solve a Rubik's Cube and have it thrown at a chalkboard. A game like that would be like, oh, you didn't do your homework? Well, would you like to restart the mission and complete your homework? No, then that's it, you lose. A lot of games focus on player endings and not making paths vastly change in game experience. You can choose whatever boring ass ending you want, some minor path variations which are essentially the same because the world usually doesn't even change in the game afterward, or they just make you restart the mission until you pick the preferred option. So here's where I'm going to drop a load. Why are story heavy games with poor game mechanics the only ones I mentioned besides the top 6 I listed? I think there's a trend going on where people think all the good choice oriented games need to have cinematic boring game mechanics is compared to the more action type story games because their ideas are too much to handle. Bro, these nuts are too much to handle but I handle them anyway because I have to. I want to have a quality experience when I use the restroom. I don't just say, oh well it's gonna ruin the experience of my day so I'm not gonna take a shit. This is what I'm talking about in AAA games where they can create multiple endings to induce the feeling that there's some game changing mechanic or choice you're about to make but really you're just distracting from the fact those choices are really just one trick ponies and lead to no impact at the end of the game. Some develop Developers just insert these half-assed choice deviations that lead to nowhere, then go, well, we know what's best for you. Like, hello? Are you my teacher now? Are we in a Rubik's Cube class again? Stop telling me what I should do. These games tell you when to shit and where. Like, they're trying to save me time, and really at the end of the day, it just gives them a mixed bag. Yeah, you can change the formula and shit some other time, but guess what? If you do, you die. That's what happens. You wanna leave Batman under some rubble while playing as Catwoman and go take a shit or take a nap? He dies. In the game, the game ends. The creativeness of the ending is cool in that scenario, like it's a little easter egg, I'll give it that. But you just make me want more. A new hope just becomes a false hope. These developers are like, okay, here's the dialogue. John goes, yo, you like nuts? The player should say, yeah, and then he gives you some nuts. But here's the other option. No, I don't like nuts. And just to make you feel like there's another option, we'll just put that there, but really, he's just gonna give you nuts anyway. How about I wanna say, no, I don't like nuts, and then he kicks me in the nuts, and he says, yeah, you like nuts? You like nuts now, dumbass? It would be well worth thinking outside the box because it changes everything, and now you have to live without raising children for the rest of the game, which changes the experience. Now that we're talking about consistency and choices, here's the beef that I have with GTA 5 that seems to exist 
exists in every single Rockstar game. The instant you lay hands on a person, run them over, even if it's in the middle of the desert with no one to witness it, in camouflage, in a soundproof room underground with a thousand mines outside the base on an island that has naturally occurring EMP so you can't use satellites to eavesdrop or electronics, the cops somehow get a telepathic notification like my cop senses are tingling, automatically knowing where you are and come for you. So yeah, you could try to think outside the box, but why would you? Games need to stop thinking jokes are just fun alternate choices or dumb turns and don't really have to have meaning to them. No, Matt, that's dumb. You're dumb. Stop making choices. Do your homework. You know what? No, you stop. Look, Red Dead Redemption 2 is newer than GTA 5 and it still suffers the same issues. How in the heck could a cop possibly know if you stomp someone out in the middle of the woods? You know what? Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. So let's say I bring a cop out for a picnic with some random ass guy that I want to stomp out so the cop can witness it. Then I stomp him out too. Instantly, I could get a wanted level. How the heck does that even happen? The cop didn't even have time to call anybody. And let's say I didn't stomp his ass out. He can't even call, first of all. This is an old Western game. There's no cell phones. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? No, there isn't. Right, Rockstar? Right? You see what I'm trying to get at here? Options don't need to make sense, only the results do, without breaking the immersion of the setting and time and space. I've seen some kid driving around in circles on a moped in real life, in a parking lot in real life, and I was like, what is he even doing in real life? This makes zero sense. But you know what? He might become better at driving that moped, thus helping him ride safer, where in an alternate universe he crashes his moped, where a guy helps him and tricks him into going on a picnic with some crazy guy. But now that he's good at riding a moped, he can dodge him and survive. The results show. That's what video games are for, to explore as many cool options that can change the world path. Imagine if some leader of a town was like, please, help us kill this dragon. I'm just the guy with the crown. Oh no, it's coming for the town. So you head over, see where it's attacking, and you see it attacking some guards, and you say, yeah, fuck that, that's actually a dragon. So you let all the guards die, and then head back to the town to see what happens, and he just defaults back to the original context like nothing ever happened. Like, hey, welcome to White Run. Almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Like, that would just take me right out of the game. Or imagine if you didn't kill the dragon, the game just ended or loads to a checkpoint every single time. Like you didn't make the right choice. Make the right choice right now. Luckily, if you don't save his soldiers and you run away and then talk to the Jarl of Whiterun, he actually gets mad at you, which is how it should be in most games. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking up Skyrim a bit, but, and yeah, there's plenty unrealistic glitches to talk about with Bethesda recently, but that's not, that's not the point here. In Fallout New Vegas, they had major factions, minor factions, Vegas strip factions, and a bunch of other random random factions, strip clubs, which is not relevant, but that's cool too, so that's why I mentioned it. Where if you choose to do something one person chose is wrong or not the norm, it would evoke a reaction to another faction, possibly executing multiple actions. It even rhymes. There's one mission you could save a huge lost town of ghouls that are friendly, but you could be a complete asshole like, yeah, fuck these guys and just let them all die. In the DLC Dead Money, you could talk to a super mutant who has multiple personality disorder and he talks to himself, kind of like me. You can change which person personality comes out of him by using a mixtape that triggers the switch. You can get him as a Thank follower you. and gain different perks or advantages just based on the path you choose. Fallout 3, blowing up Megaton, which I never did myself, but that's a small example of something you can do that's not of the norm and causes controversy among the Fallout community in real life and the actual game world like it should. So developers, I'm not sure what my point is here, but next time, use common sense when putting choices in games because I clearly have common sense and they do tingle now and then, but when they do, it's within the limits of time and space. And time and space is what matters at the end of the day. Imagine if we didn't have time and space. People would be flying off in like different directions. No, we don't want that. Thank you.